Hello, and welcome to a yet another completely unprofessional unboxing. Scott here, and today is going to be an unboxing of something that I kickstarted some time ago, and it's taking its sweet time in production and whatnot, but uh, hopefully the time they took to, uh, you know, shave off or sand off the, uh, the edges on this thing has proved worthwhile, and we shall see what is inside. Um, well, let's go ahead and begin. I have my trusty Coleman camping knife here and we shall proceed to cut open this box without slicing one of my fingers this time. All right, so we are going to take our time with this. These boxes can be a little precarious and likewise confusing, but Anyways, you think I'd be an old hand at opening these things, but nope. And, oh, there we go. And see, it slices like that, that one day, one day, you might see myself cutting. You can see me cutting myself, I should say. All right. Taped very well. And there we go. And put this off. Right, so what do we have in here? Something from, oh, and then there's my address. Well, you know, I may try to edit that out. We shall see, or do some funky editing and then not show it, but uh, I can do that thing. I like computers and I'm an IT guy. So anyways, uh, what you may have noticed once I opened it was a packing slip from Andrews McMeal Universal. And that should give you a general idea of where this is coming from. And inside is a variety of things. Uh, when I backlist some time ago, I did kind of go hog wild, as it did a lot of people in anticipation of it. And even though it's been a long time, hopefully a lot of the steam uh, that came from this game when it came out hasn't subsided. Uh, but we'll see. I mean, the big thing is, is I won't know until we look at the game. But to start off with, we have a little envelope here. Good Lord. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Well, I need to find an envelope like this for stuff that I... Wow. Okay. It's going to require some scrubbing to get off. So what do we have in here? We have some dice and some coins to be utilized with the game. Uh, as you can see, there's a picture of a star on the dice and, you know, a, a woman holding a battered flag. <clears throat> and then some dice with some caricatures on them to notate what these would be used with. But I don't think these don't require special dice. It was just part of the package. So we'll set those aside. I'm going to set the map aside for now and just get to the book itself. Boy. So, in case you haven't guessed already, this is Flames of Freedom, a grim and perilous RPG powered by Zweihander. Just like its big brother, gigantic. Um, this is something that you do not want, uh, you know, on your upper shelf if your upper shelf is about ready to collapse. Uh, but definitely on your bottom shelf because if it does collapse on top of it, this is going to re remain holding everything upright. Uh, but anyways. <clears throat> It is the dawn of the American Revolutionary War of 1776. A tangled web of conspiracies spans North America in the war for survival. It does not matter your creed, color, culture, or gender all stand together. But as the revolution has begun, something far more mysterious stirs. Agents of the occult entreat both the Continental Army and Redcoats. Freemasons conspire in the city of brotherly love. Maryland is in the throes of witch hunt by the Knights Templar. So we'll just leave it at that. In the very bottom of it, this American Gothic horror game includes most of what you need to play. A uh, player's handbook, a game master's guide, a bestiary, and an introdu introductory adventure with a sandbox campaign set in and around Boston. All that's left are a few friends, pencils, and a handful of dice. So there is the book. Um, it's good looking cover. Obviously the cover is going to give you an idea of what it is. I'm just going to open it here and just take a brief little look at it. And 
exciting stuff. Taking cellophane off. And off to the side we go. Just move that forward a little bit. Okay. Inside map. Claims of Freedom Core rulebook. And we'll just kind of just, just page through it. So we've got the table of contents. Uh, preamble, basics of gameplay, creating characters. Uh, an impressive list of professions, very similar to Zweihander. Uh, those definitely were going to need some uh, attention to details. We read through them because um, I assume there is a little bit of personalization involved with those. Likewise, maybe a little tongue-in-cheek topical humor, which was the case with the other Zweihander book. Uh, as we go on, skills and talents, wares and weapons, narrative tools, combat encounters, healing hazards and horror, uh, hex and masters, hex and masters almanac, uh, life during wartime, indigenous nations, colonia obscura, historian secrets, and article 14, threats. Oh, no more Boston besiege, which probably is the adventure. And here we are. We've got the preamble with some more artwork. Um, you know, say what you will about Zweihander. Uh, a lot of the artwork within the um, the original book is is very good. Uh, it definitely does carry a grim and perilous, mud and blood tone to it. Um, and uh, hopefully this carries over into this book. Um, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. It's just too huge. We're just going to just maybe flip through a little bit. Uh, bookkeeper and a boatswain is one of your professions you can choose. Nice little ribbon, and so on and so forth. And yes, so and here we are. So it's just going to go ahead, and I mean, this is this is something that you're not going to just sit down in one day and absorb. This is going to take some time to go through to get a general feel what the game is and what it's offering to your GM and your players but like I said the the artwork you know the artwork is is fantastic um, definitely there's no question when paging through it and looking at the artwork you know what and where and when this possibly takes place so I'll go ahead and close this and set this aside um, we do have some advertisements in here um, you know, along with Swihander, Flames of Freedom, Neverland, uh, Into the Dungeon, and Choose Your Own Path of Adventure. And then, of course, the up-and-coming Kickstarter of Blackbirds uh, being brought out next by, um, by them. Uh, just saw an announcement the other day. I know nothing about it. And so I will go ahead and let them speak for themselves whenever they, you know, whenever the Kickstarter starts. And then last we have... A very nice GM screen uh, with artwork from inside the book on it. And um, always like, whether you use them or not, uh, always like when a lot of effort and creativity is put into the GM screen. I'm going to go ahead and open it. It'd be easier if I just hold this off camera for a moment. My apologies. Okay. And I don't, I don't own a Swihander GM screen. I am, couldn't tell you if they made one or not. I assume they have. But like with most GM screens, it's not just the artwork on the outside, which, ooh, okay, let's, let's highlight this real quick. So yes, you know, say what you will about GM screens. <clears throat> you know, the information inside can run the gamut of being extremely useful to not really providing much, but just them putting on what they can. But the outside of the GM screen, you know, I do appreciate it, appreciate it when, you know, it, it evokes a sense of immersion within the game. You know, something that if you player facing side, they can look at and, you know, help them envision the game, what's going on. And likewise, just kind of evoke, you know, a sense of uh, the world that they're playing in. And I think this definitely does a good job of that uh, without going too artistically in depth into the, uh, the piece itself. But, uh, you know, definitely, definitely a, um, uh, a, a great image here. Uh, one thing to note, though, it was close to such as this. 
And I don't know, it's one of those things, since it was bound in plastic, if this was in the, uh, in the wild at a retail store, not being able to see this definitely detracts from, uh, you know, from the attractive nature of purchasing it because you don't get to appreciate the image. Um, you know, obviously you can look it up online. I'm sure they share what the picture looks like. But I mean, you know, showcase your strong points uh, when it comes to GM screens. Don't, don't hide them behind uh, additional wrap or, you know, um, you know, other, you know, imagery. Uh, let it speak for itself. And a lot of GM screens don't do that. But anyways, last we have the one map that I've had. It is a cloth map. I am a map addict and aficionado. Um, a lot of games that I've played are forgiven due to the, um, uh, you know, depending on the uh, type of negative qualities they might have within the game system itself or whatever the case may be. But a lot of those are overlooked to me because I'm a giant pushover for, for wonderful maps. So this is not going to show up on screen, but I'll just... So it looks like, just from looking at this, that it covers most of the Northern Territory of the uh, Hudson Bay Company, Can Can Canada area. <laughs> and the Great Lakes here, as you can see, Michigan, it looks like it goes just west of Wisconsin and highlighting the colonies here. And oh, I'll go ahead and flip it over to the other side. And I really hope this is showing up on camera the way it should be. Um, and then also highlighting further north to Hudson Bay. And a little notation here. Map of the eastern coastlines of North America where are displayed former British colonies now forming the United States of America along with notable neighboring dominions controlled by British and Spanish empires based on surveys and ratified treaties circa 1776. Um, very thick quality. This is something that you can definitely hang up. Uh, without having it be in the frame and it will definitely uh, keep its form um, kind of very similar to a um, uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Um, oh god huh. anyways uh, brain farts typical for this thing but anyways it's, it is a beautiful map uh, and definitely will find a home for it somewhere up on a wall within my house move the box out of the way here so in closing this was the unboxing of flames of freedom um i have no idea if it's this is a game i'm going to be getting around to play anytime soon uh there might be a good chance that i might be a player within it and definitely looking forward to you know some of the reviews that are going to come from this to see you know if this is if this is a standalone product or is it just Zweihander, you know, with a pretty wrap around it. Um, it could go either way, but we shall see. So Flames of Freedom, uh, Grim and Perilous RPG powered by Zweihander. I hope you enjoyed this unboxing and um, more to come. Uh, there's a lot of Kickstarters and other things that are coming my way that are being fulfilled, minor purchases that I have made. And as mentioned in another video, this is the time of year where a lot of the late zines from the zine quest start to trickle in. And as those come in, I will highlight them also. So everyone have an excellent day and I look forward to talking with you again soon.